is people welcome and welcome back to xo courtney xo where it's all courtney and it's all love so as y'all could tell by the title of this video i'm going to be speaking to a topic that i think i have a great deal of knowledge regarding just personally because i'm going to be sharing and i have shared on this channel instances where i know that i suffer silently and kind of just manage things on my own now i'm not saying that um, the best thing to do is to create a YouTube channel and put all your business out there. You know, I'm not suggesting that, um, what works for you may not work for me and what works for me may not work for you. But what I am saying is that silently suffering is not the best mode of achievement for anything, right? So usually when we say something like, you know, suffering silently, it's usually surrounding social disorders, like, um, anxiety, depression, um, just any sort of mental health issue, right? But the reality is that in most cases, there is a root issue that leads to those mental disorders that we're not managing accordingly or properly. And that's because we are choosing to suffer likely in silence, right? So for me, I want to say that, you know, I want to use a few different examples in regards to ways that I feel me no longer suffering silently has helped me. So let's just start with the obvious, which is with my health as far as my mens my physical condition, having my hips replaced, right? So when I started this channel in 2020, well, when I started to actually create videos for this channel in 2020, it was at the height of the pandemic. And I didn't know what to expect, whether I would be here a year later or not. And, you know, for me, I was managing a lot regarding my mental space when it came to my family. And, um, you know, I had to put that on the back burner just so that I could manage my physical needs, which to me ranked higher in priority, right? So even with my physical condition, y'all, when I started the channel, I didn't talk about my physical condition. And the reason that I didn't talk about my physical condition is because people around me knew and saw what I was going through. And, um, you know, I'm a single black female, I live by myself. And sometimes, you know, vulnerabilities, you have to be cautious of the information that you put out there because you don't know who might want to attack you or hurt you in, in certain sort of ways. And I've learned that here on the channel with sharing my business because it has been um, thrown back up in my face. But I made cautious and conscious decisions to do that. So I'm okay with what energy is out there regarding me because I know my heart. But as far as my physical is concerned, it wasn't until I made the video, if y'all really realized I was making videos. Well, I made one video and I talked about my hip condition. I actually stood up and showed you all how I walked. Um, I was outside with my EG pool. Rest in peace, babe. But um, yeah, I took a little stroll in front of the camera so that y'all could see how my my hips had turned in and my feet was turning outward and my thighs were just like hitting, hitting, hitting. And that's generally what happens or what it looks like with the arthritic condition in the hips, right? For any person, you start to walk with your, you know, if you hurt your hip, all of a sudden that foot starts to kick out and it's because the 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 joint is is finding a way to find itself comfortable and it's um forcing your extremities to just kind of do what they want to do, okay, for comfort levels. But anyway, I say all that to say, it wasn't until I made that video, and up until I made that video, I had expressed that, you know, unfortunately, because of my age, because of my weight, and because, you know, I don't know, my color, I couldn't find the right doctors that I felt confident in, or who felt confident in moving forward with surgery for me, until I made that video. I made that video and the universe heard me. The universe opened up the doors. I found the best surgical team that I could ever have imagined. And today I am a year post-op just, uh, this past October and December, my body feels great. I'm moving better. Don't get me wrong. Everything's not perfect. I still have some things that I am managing, but you know, that's a part of the process. And I am so grateful and so happy to be where I'm at. But that is a part of my testimony. So if I didn't speak to y'all about it, y'all wouldn't know either what the God in me or the greatness of God. And Another thing with suffering and silence that I find so interesting within the black community specifically is because a lot of us were ch raised in Baptist churches or in a, in a, you know, a spiritual or church background, right? And we grew up seeing our elders give testimonies and they told us you have got to go through some trials and some tribulations in order to have this testimony. And that testimony speaks to the wonders of God, right? So for me, I feel amazing having been able to share 
my physical restraints and being where I'm at right now. It's, it's just a testament to how awesome God is. And it's just a reminder of, you know, all things being possible through God and through me, you know, through just focusing and, and manifesting what it is that you need. And that's what, you know, came out of me no longer suffering in silence regarding my hip condition. Now with my family, <laughs> it's not the same case. I wish it was. I wish I could have, you know, a beautiful share for you all right now. I wish I could be like, hey, matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to bring my mom to the camera and I could be bringing her in right now. But that's not the case. Unfortunately, before I started making these videos where I talked about me and my mom getting into it and me asking her to leave or her leaving or whatever, or my aunt calling the cops on me, or the time in 2016, which was the last time I was in Louisville, Kentucky, which is where I was born and is my hometown more or less, right? New York is my hometown for real, for real. But y'all know that's, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, 2016 was the last year that I was in Louisville and me and my sister got into it real bad and she put, she asked me to leave her place and I just traveled all these miles to see you and your family. So I was brokenhearted and my family wasn't dealing with me then and they're not dealing with me now. The difference though is that I'm no longer suffering silently about it. I have confronted them about the way that they've made me feel and I've confronted, um, everybody involved to be honest and their response for me is almost like I'm the problem and realistically I expected that because you know whenever there's an issue out of sight out of mind so my family lives in Louisville Kentucky I live in New York City so it's out of sight and it's out of mind I'm out of sight and I'm out of their minds and that's unfortunate because growing up Christian and growing up Baptist I feel like forgiveness was something that I learned in my family a lot and I'm not even the person who needs to be forgiven but I have forgiven every person person to be honest and I just feel like I was I am able to because of the fact that I spoke about certain things because what happens was I started to see that everybody is not me everybody is not sitting at the level of maturation that I am everybody is not going to see the air of their ways and not everyone is even able to apologize right not everyone is able to say hey I messed up how can I fix this? Let's fix this. Let's move forward. And that's really all I really truly honestly wanted when I started to make the videos sharing about circumstances that went on with my family. Because to be honest, growing up, I thought I had the picture perfect most. I loved my aunts and my cousins. I love all of my family to death. You couldn't tell me that we weren't the creme de la creme. But as I be became of age and I started to realize the history and the secrets and stuff and I started to realize that a lot of it was surrounding me and who my father is and for those of you who don't know and for those of you who are in the dark who just came across this video um unfortunately and I am going to say this and I know that you know my family does not like that I'm bringing this up they're like oh but that's not your story to tell and in so many ways it is not exclusively my story to tell but it's the story that affects me a great deal. So my mom was sexually assaulted and I am her child from that sexual assault. Okay. Very traumatic experience, but it speaks highly to the dynamics between mine and my mom's relationship. And for a long time, because I didn't have the answers or I didn't have the proof y'all in 2014, when I went to visit my family in Louisville, Kentucky, I took a paternity test and I know exactly who my father is. Now this man has been in my life, my entire life, but not as my father. Okay. So for me, the abandonment, the, it, it was real. It was so, the trust issue, so real, like so heartbreaking. And, you know, my family expected me to just sweep it under the rug like they had and just pretend like nothing went on. And you know what? Maybe I could have had I had the support or the love from my family to get through that, but I didn't. You know, again, they applied the out of sight, out of mind sort of ideas. And so I decided, you know what? Hey, if I'm out of your sight and I'm out of your mind, then fine. Same, same applies. And so that's when I took to my YouTube channel and I started to share just different stories and just different things. And honestly, I shared those stories with the hopes that my family would reach out to me that, you know, it would rekindle something that the Christians that I knew growing up would say, you know, this is not Christ-like behaviors. This is not forgiveness. This is not, you know, what love truly looks like. And it's unfortunate because, and I'm not speaking to my immediate family alone because I addressed the, the, the great aunties and great uncles and everybody else too. And to be honest, you know, God, if, if you, especially if you're a religious person and you're supposed to be a Christian, God should be in you. And it should have, it, 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 sometimes, like they say, it takes a village to raise a, a, a child. You know, 
our family village, you know, could have done a better job in protecting one another. Now, I have a lot of women in my family, y'all. So, you know, it's very few males. So to be honest, you know, I guess it was a bunch of catty behaviors or just mistrust, distrust. And what I came to realize is that me not having a relationship with some people in my family is actually what other people, other members of the family hoped for and anticipated and loved and liked, you know? Uh, my family tries to make it seem like I'm this black sheep of the family at this point, but you know, I guess that's because I'm not, you know, and I'm not being braggadocious or nothing like that. But I think that if I was a stereotype, like if I would have had like 10 kids and 14 baby daddies and, you know, been on public assistance my entire life and, you know, not trying to do nothing with myself, not a college graduate, things like that, they would embrace me and love me down. You understand? Love me down. But because I'm saying, hey, you know, there's a problem and we can work on this or because I'm able to see things from a lens or eye that they just can't figure out or even don't want to figure out. Here we are. It's a problem. But as far as this video is concerned, I just wanted to share the fact that I've decided personally to no longer suffer in silence and I encourage you to do the same thing because suffering in silence usually can result in, like I stated in the beginning, mental concerns, right, developing. Um, but not only mental issues, you can even create a cancer. You can create a worry. You can create a space in your, in your body that, you know, is just prone to... Um, illness because of emotions that you're harboring. And, you know, people don't realize that, you know, suicidality can come from, you know, pain, being neglected, being abandoned, you know, having these trust issues, because that's what it was for me. And I know that people don't necessarily see me as a person who would hurt themselves and today I would never but there were times where I was so lost and I was so confused and I had no body that I felt like it would be better if I wasn't here and I hate that I even thought like that I hate that and I hope that none of you ever think like that either. So if you come across this video and you are managing some sort of stressors in your life and you've been suffering silently, I encourage you to get creative in any way possible. Whether you want to write a book, which stay tuned, you know, or whether you choose to make videos or talk to your mom, your dad, your best friend, a stranger, call a hotline, you know, um, go to church, you know, seek therapy, do that. Do that for you. Do that for you. Because what I came to the realization of is that before I made these videos, I didn't have my family. Now that I made the videos, I don't have my family. Nothing has changed with them. But with me, everything has changed. It's the fact that I could speak and realize that not everyone, and I, again, I'm not being braggadocious. I'm not saying, oh, I'm smarter than this person or nothing like that. That is not my intention of the intentions of my words. What I'm saying is that, you know, be you. If, if other people are not ready to grow up, if other persons don't see, you know, the need to have you in their lives or to, to do the right thing by you or to, if they're not mature enough to say, hey, I messed up or I was wrong or, you know, we got to fix this because we're a family or whatever, let it go and move on because that's exactly the space that I'm in today. And I know that I have a bunch of my family members who are actually subscribed to this channel. They never say nothing. They never comment on anything. Maybe a five second video, maybe a 10 second video, whatever the case may be, because possibly they don't want to have this get to a space where, you know, it is known anyway, which I could totally understand. But God is in control of all things. And again, my point in this video is to just remind you to not suffer silently. If you are going through some things, grow through it. Give it to God. Let it go. And that's exactly where I'm at right now. And I want to thank you all for watching this video. And for those of you who have been rocking with me, thank you for rocking with me. I know that my consistency levels are here, there, and everywhere. But I am trying to get better now that I am no longer on any other social media platform. Actually, y'all, I just joined this site called Clapper. And I think I might do a video on that site because there's some interesting things happening over there. But anyway, I'm not going to make this video any longer than it needs to be. If you need someone to talk to, find someone to talk to, even if you don't have a friend, because let me tell you, I'll be honest in saying that I can remember a time that I actually had to call a hotline some years ago just to kind of get my mind around what was going on just to wrap my, my mind around what was going on. And that was like the beginning of me no longer wanting to suffer silently, but just not knowing how to not 
suffer silently. And then I figured it out. So with that being said, you know the vibes. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Then turn on that button and get notified. All right, y'all. Peace.